All righty. So let's talk enclosures. You know, as we mentioned before, any speaker can work in any enclosure. It just depends on how well it's going to work. So what we wanted to do tonight is we want to talk about, you know, why enclosures are important. What do they do for you? And, you know, more importantly... Enclosures important? Yes. I can't just buy the subwoofer and put it in the... Nope. Oh. Nope. you got to actually do it right. So. But I heard free air works. Free air is free. It doesn't cost you anything. Yeah, that's so right that's on. one of the things we want to talk about is why you need an enclosure and what the different enclosures do. So uh, I think uh, we can get this tablet to, to cooperate here. I think we had this problem last week, didn't we? I don't know if it was last week, but at one point we did have a little tablet problem there. There we go. All right. I, I think I'm, I'm good to go here. So let's go ahead and pull up the tablet here, Ernie. So we want to talk about, you know, why is an enclosure important? So, and you guys can all laugh at my drawing if you want. So we have an enclosure, basically a speaker, and we're looking at the speaker from the side. And the whole point of an enclosure or a baffle, more importantly, is, you know, we start talking about, you know, output, you know, what we call sound pressure level, SPL. So to develop pressure, you have to have basically a way to contain that waveform. So if I talk about a speaker, just you remember the old days, you probably still see it today, people just set their six by nines, put them by nines in the back of the deck. They're drive around yes, their speaker sitting on the magnets facing up. They just don't sound very good. Well, the problem with that is as the speaker moves forward, it's trying to develop pressure. That pressure is allowed to go around to the backside and cancel. So it'd be like me trying to clap with one hand, just trying to push air. Uh, the air from the front wraps around the back, so, and same thing for the back side, it'll come around to the forward. So it really kind of cancels itself. So what we want to do is we want to isolate the front from the back, and we do that with a baffle. As I drop this down, I guess I could set this up here. So with this baffle, now it's going to take that wavelength longer to get around. It will not cancel as low of a frequency. So, so you get a little more bass out of it just by having it in that Exactly, just space. by putting Not it on a board. Full box. Just a baffle. Yeah. Now what's really important, and we start you know, getting into some other details here and some other kind of interesting things, if we look at a 40 hertz note, you want to know how long is a 40 hertz note? Well, to do that, you take Physically, the, how long it is. Physically in length. You take the frequency, divide it by the speed of sound. So if we take 40 hertz, and we divide it by the speed of sound, it's about 1130 feet per second. That's going to give us a wavelength of 28 and one quarter feet. That's how long a 40 hertz note is. Okay, so why is that important? So it's really important, especially the guys with single cab pickups, you can't get that whole waveform inside the vehicle. Of course not. It's just physically impossible. But with an infinite baffle, if you want to get 40 hertz to play its maximum potential, you would have to have this baffle basically be seven feet away from the edge of the woofer. Because that'll give you seven feet for the sound to travel this way, seven feet to travel this way. That's going to put it back in phase with the front wave. So literally, to get 40 hertz on an infinite baffle, if it was just a board in the middle of nowhere, you would have to be basically seven feet square. And that's for a 40 hertz note. Yeah. So that's pretty darn big. Right. So what we want to do is we want to put this in a vehicle so you can take this you know, infinite baffle and you can press the speakers up against the rear deck, against the back seat. But just remember, any amount that that air leaks back around or leaks to the front of the speaker, it's going to cancel output. So anytime you do an infinite baffle, it's very important you seal the vehicle, and, you know, even the back seat. So if you got infinite baffle, you're going to take a 12-inch woofer fired up through the rear deck, but you got six by nine holes and you know, you've got you know, claw seats. You There's really... usually holes in that back deck for all kinds of stuff. So it could be for the uh, rear deck speaker grills. It could be for child safety seats, latch, something like that. Yep. And all that stuff is holes between your baffle there. Yeah, and any amount that it, it does that, so you get a little bigger, it, you know, if you got a hole here that's going to allow that sound to leak, you know, through because I've got an opening in that baffle or if it, it sneaks around somewhere else. So it's really important. So seven foot on each side. I don't think so, John. No, nobody's going to do that. So what are we... How that's are not going to fit in your vehicle because that's 14 feet across. Yeah, so how so, are we going to... How do we get around that? And that's how, you know, by placing that against the back seat or in the rear deck, you're going to now be able to use the trunk as the enclosure. So literally, it'd have to go completely outside the vehicle and back in. Uh, you don't throw that up on the cover, are you? 
Good old Ernie. Er Ernie's mad. There's too much scribbling on there. <laughs> All right. So that's one of the things, that, and it's really important. There's three things that control the movement of a speaker. Okay. So when you start talking about speaker movement, you've got three actual things that control the speaker movement. The first one is the electronic you know, equipment, Current. a crossover. Ah. Crossover will limit the output. The second one is the mechanics of the speaker. So a speaker is really interesting because if we take the speaker, and let's draw it on the side this time, speaker has a zero point, a plus direction, and a minus direction. That's why you've got plus and minuses, and the speaker is actually going to move in and out. So if I have a sine wave, and this is one full wavelength, from this point to this point, that is one wavelength. And if this was, say, one second long, if that sine wave was one second, that'd be one hertz. So every vibration per second is hertz. The cone moves all the way out, the cone goes all the, all way, the way in, back. and then back to rest. That's one so, cycle. And then if we start talking about wavelength, we started talking about that 40 hertz. So a 40 hertz wavelength, do you know how long this is from here to here? We, we just, just talked we just about said it. it was 20, 28 feet. Eight and one quarter feet. Yeah, but we'll just narrow it down to 28 feet. So what that's going to do for you is that's going to tell you that speaker is going to move out to this point, and then it's going to turn around and move backwards to that point and move back. So that speaker is actually going to be moving in and out. If I want to play louder, I have to push that speaker farther. So I'll push it farther. So now the speaker is actually moving out farther and in farther, that's going to make it louder. But I've not changed the duration of that wavelength. So what will happen if you have an amplifier, here's your amplifier. Now we're going to look at that sine wave as an amplifier. Say we have an amplifier that has plus and minus 20 volts of power, so a 40 volt swing. So I've got this sine wave, and this is the limits of the amplifier. The amplifier can produce this sine wave. If I want it louder. I want to crank it to 11, John. Yep, you're going to turn it up. It's going to push it farther, as we talked about here. So wavelength doesn't change, but amplitude does. But the movement of the speaker. So if I push it even farther, say I want this, for instance. You think it can do that, Ken? Well, your lines plus 20, minus 20 are kind of steering me to that. I don't think so, John. Yeah, what's going to happen is basically you're going to get a square wave response. And this is where we start talking about distortion. And that's where the actual wavelength will become squared. And I don't know why this quit drawing. The point is, is it maxes out when it the amp yeah, hits it's, its limits and says, hey, I can't do any. I'm trying to give you what you want, but I'm not capable. I'll try. So it's going to start giving us this square wave response. Now, we talk about speakers. You know, they move. There's three different forms of energy. You have heat, light, and motion. So from the zero point to the plus point, the speaker moves out. And then if we go from that plus from this point to this point. I can't see what you're saying when you say this point. I know. Like I say, I'm trying to draw with this pen. This, this Surface tablet just does Apple not pencil. like me at all. So let's clear this out. Let's, let's redraw this. Maybe it'll make it easier. I think it's got too much information up there. So we've got our zero, our plus, and our minus. If I try to make the amplifier do this, the amplifier cannot reproduce that. It's going to give us what we call a clip signal or square wave, where this is what it's going to produce. And that is what we call square wave. So from this point to this point, that speaker is going to move out. From this point to this point, that speaker stays stationary. And from this point to this point, it moves back in. And then from this point to this point, it's stationary again, then it turns around. So I can see the subwoofer stopped fully outward? Yeah, you'll probably not see it do that, but your ears so, are going to hear that. Well, it's not distortion. really a big deal if I can't see it, right? Yeah, but you can sure hear think it. Your about ears are a lot more sensitive. Think about what's happening in the voice coil during that time. You're either full tilt positive, full tilt negative. You're getting all the power through the voice coil during a time it's actually not moving. And how does the subwoofer cool itself? Well, and remember, you Move got three it. forms of energy, heat, light, and motion. The speaker's not moving. It's not creating, you know, light. What's it doing? Heating up. It's creating heat. Yeah. So the big thing is 95% of the time, if you're burning up your speaker, you do not have enough power. I know it sounds crazy, but if you have, like, the suspension tears on the speaker, and that's the other thing that can Mechanicals. control the cone movement, yeah. is the mechanics of the speaker. If the speaker's bottoming out, if you're tearing tinsel leads, you're tearing spiders, you're tearing surround, 
you have it either in the wrong enclosure or you don't have the right type of electronic dampening. You don't have the right subsonic, subsonic filter. filter. So right. that's why it's really important with enclosures to have the right enclosure. And have the right for what you're looking for, right? Yep.